praise the Lord. Amen. Egalities. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. I said legalities. legalities. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's something that I believe that the body of Christ has to come into full understanding of. Number one, life is a product of an intermingling of material and spirit. That means that the full benefit of life can only be consistently achieved when the spirit is employed in cases where life must be experienced. That means that when you are going through life and you do it only physically, there's an extent of benefit you will experience. Because it, life is a, is a product from the spirit. It's not a natural thing. It's, it came from a realm and the realm is God. God breathed into man and that breath was the breath of lives. So there was a spirit interface to material that produced life. So life cannot be lived in only the physical realm. What that means is that you cannot be casual about life. You cannot be casual about life. If you are casual about life, uh, I'll borrow what uh, Papa Bishop Pudupu said, you will become a casualty. So if you treat life casually, you become a casualty. So there is something somebody knows you don't know that is making things work for them. And you ought to know it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you cannot be sleeping whilst the people want to fight you are awake. And when I say sleeping, I'm not talking of physical putting your head on a bed. I'm talking of you cannot live anyhow. Job 31 verse 22. I, I remember Dr. George used that scripture. Job 31 22. See something. Let's go there. Okay. Okay. All right. He said, let my arm fall from my shoulder blade and my arm be broken from thy bone. Next, verse 23. For destruction from God was a terror to me and by reason of the highest I could not endure. I'm coming to something very important here. The moment you don't understand that this life, like I said, is founded on laws. For instance, um, you will notice that Mercury, Mars, Earth, um, Venus are solid planets. Do you know that Jupiter is a gas? That means that when you get to Jupiter, you might not get solid ground to stand on. It's a gaseous planet. So there are few planets you can stand on when you land. There are some planets when you get there, there's nothing to stand on. Is gas and the best you can get is uh, some kind of liquid that looks like water so there's no soil because you you see you think that earth is um, a default of creation earth is actually a product of something called silicon silica that's why you have earth it's a chemical compound that brown thing you see called dirt is is a compound Jesus Christ. Legalities. <laughs> that should tell you then that there are some planets that are not habitable. So the whole concept of alienism is a, is a, a very silly concept because there are some planets were created to provide certain gaseous interferences upon the face of the earth to keep our galaxies and earth in orbit. That means that God knew that Earth would be the hub of existence. Other planets would just be uh, producers of forces that would cause the Earth to remain in course. Mm. My preaching. What that means is that for every planet to enter into, there is a law by which you can dwell there. When you go to the moon, you can't live like you're on Earth. That means that if you come as a human being, there's a way to live. 
If you live anyhow according to your preference, you'll be in trouble. It's like going to the moon and saying that I don't care, I can breathe. Uh, let, let me breathe. You'll see what you are breathing. <laughs> so you are breathing all right, but you realize that you cannot be. It means there's a law by which you exist on the moon. There's a law by which you exist on Mars. There's a law by which you exist on any planet. That means that even on Earth, there's a law that governs the Earth. But unfortunately, you see, we've not understood the laws. That's so why everything we do is casual. That's why we always get we always get set up into trouble. Like you are like, I thought it's going to work. Why didn't it work? No, 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 no. I told you some time ago, someone actually put it up and I said this in church. That you should understand that because you are programmed by what you see and hear, nothing you see or hear is by mistake. You are too casual about this thing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Nothing you see or hear is by mistake. It is programming you for perfection. Or it is deprogramming you for your, your, your acute, your, your sharpness in the realm of operation. You will see that, you see, things you are hearing just getting to you to stop you. And I'll show you something today. I, I pray God gives me, because there are a lot of things I want to tell you. Let, let me say this before I forget to say it. Time is the, is the, is the function of destiny. That means that any time you are sitting down, you wake up in the morning, destiny beckons. Whatever you spend time on is an exchange. Either to reduce your destiny expression or to enhance the speed by which your destiny will be expressed. So if I know I'm going to be a doctor, and I'm going to school and I'm learning engineering. At the end of examination, I cannot expect to pass that doc medical exam. Why? I exchanged my time for engineering. Can I tell you the same thing is happening every day you wake up in the morning? Every day you get to your room. Every day you put on the music. Every day, every day you listen to the news. You are exchanging information. That's supposed to either enhance your destiny or take you off course so that in the day you have to answer the question of destiny, you don't have the right answers. Because everything you are hearing is designed, oh, everything you are hearing is designed for something. That's so what I'm going to share with you is very important. If you get this, you understand that thing. In fact, when I'm done preaching, some of you realize why your prayers have not been answered. You don't be answered too. <laughs> oh no, let's be honest. You don't be answered. Don't waste your time, my friend. You don't be answered. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Are we here together? Are you sure? It took Jesus 30 years to comport himself. He is God, though. He can do everything. But it took 30 years. In fact, the last time the world saw him was when he was 12. For 18 years, his mother, I was saying that, um, I think I did with him yesterday. His mother was telling him that, don't do any miracle. Hide it. Hide it. It's not time. Hide it. It's not time. Then the day comes, he goes to a wedding. Then the mommy comes to tell him that. Turn the wine, the water to wine. Then Jesus quotes the thing she has been telling him. Oh. Mommy, my time is not yet. The mother says, it's time. <laughs> it's time. You are 30 now. It's time. So even Jesus had to learn to comport himself 18 years with available power. A lot of you don't know how to wait. And that's why the quality of whatever you are waiting for, when it finally arrives, you realize you don't have the competence to handle it. And you don't understand why. You think it's a curse. It's not a curse. You don't understand that when God denies... Look, I read a, I read a statement when I was meditating. And somebody said something. Of course, it was a loose talk, but there was a certain meaning to it. He said, if God wants to punish you, he will answer everything you ask. Think about it. If God wants to punish you, anything you ask him, okay. Because there are some things God is, that means that there are some things God is denying you from getting answer to, which is your safety. If God answers all the things you're asking for, you will be shocked you are not ready for fame. Because you don't know that in fame is criticism. You don't know that in fame is lack of publicity and, and privacy. You don't know that in fame your children will not have peace of mind again. And you're asking for things you are not aware of what it means. Legalities. 
<laughs> we live too casually and it's a problem. It's so casual that we don't even understand that sex is an interfacing of realms. 